What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So on today's video, my plans is to get this golf cart moving under its own power. But with that being said, let's talk a little bit about what's going on with the golf cart first. My plans from the get go was I was going to use two of the big battery uh, Falcon Elites. Those are 48 volt, 60 amp hour batteries. I was going to put one in the left side, one in the right side compartment, and then I was going to try to fit everything in the middle as far as like the controller and the uh, spare battery or the DC to DC converter goes. So I was planning on doing all of that. Well, plans change, I know. So the other night, uh, after I got done with the lift kit and upload the video, I came outside, it was real late and it kind of felt good outside. I had the garage door open here and uh, had some music going, but it wasn't too loud, you know, it was past 12. Well, I did something and I put this Roy Powell 72 volt battery in his place here directly in the center. The reason I put it there is I wanted to see if it would fit. Well, I had it in place, but I had all the terminals up here at the very front of the battery or the front of the, uh, the body here. So I uh, slid it out, turned it around, put it back in there in I think I'm gonna leave it in place here and I think I'm gonna just roll with this Roy Powell, you know, 72 volt battery. So it's been sitting around ever since that video and I was really thinking to myself, does this golf cart need 72 volts? Well, I was thinking, no, it doesn't need it. It's, it's very tall, it's, it's, it's very narrow and it's very tippy. So I'm gonna have to be careful, but I'm thinking about running this battery on this cart just because it can take up, uh, very small space or the footprint here of the battery compartment. Let me remove this again. I'm going to put this over here so I can kind of show you exactly what I'm talking about. So the reason I put it in this right here spot right here, it is not extruding from the front where the body goes. I can slide it back maybe about a half an inch and it'll be okay. Majority of the battery is sitting directly inside of the main battery compartment and a very small portion of the battery is sitting uh, behind the battery compartment above the motor. So in order to mount the battery in its location here, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it back maybe about a half an inch, drill two holes going through the front uh, battery mount here to secure the front down. I'm going to then put a strap across the top of it. I'm gonna actually take this one, shorten it down probably paint it black, uh, throw some all threads down in here, going through the main compartment down or the main frame portion in the back to strap it down. If that is not enough security for this battery because this battery is heavy, I understand that. I can always come in the back and make a, a cross member to mount the back of the battery to the frame rails. But majority of the battery is already inside of the battery compartment. It's gonna have two bolts down here. It's gonna have the strap across the bag here. And the total length of the battery is around like 29 inches. And I'll have two front bolts in the front. Then I'll have a strap around 18 inches. So it's only about 10 inches of battery in the bag here. I think that would be fine. Um, but like I said, if I have to make a cross member to mount the battery in the back, I can do that and then bolt it to the side of the frame. That shouldn't be a problem. Now, this being an 84 model club car, you have these aluminum sides here. And it's, I think they used to act as the mud flaps before the fender wells came out into the later model of the uh, frames. But this right here will keep the mud out of the battery compartment or the, the water or dirt or whatever. But I'm thinking as well, we can use these as mounts to maybe mount the controller in the solenoid. Not exactly sure if I'm gonna mount it on the passenger side or the driver side. Now, after we get the controller mounted, I wanna take out both of these right here, pieces of angle here. I know one's broken. We're not gonna use this for a main battery, but I got some 3 16 plate I like to cut out, put in this section here to mount some other accessories. Now. One of the things that I'm going to use on this golf cart, I'm going to use a 12 volt lithium battery. This right here is going to run my accessories in the PowerUS brand. Um, 
This right here battery right here is actually made by Roy Powell. Other guys on YouTube that would actually break these right here apart and show you the guts and stuff like that. And when the company send me batteries like this, I would never just bust them open because I don't want to ruin a perfectly good battery. Now, another reason I want to run this battery is because it has its own Bluetooth app. So I don't need to add a gauge on the dash for this battery here. It'll tell me the amperage being used, the amperage it's got left, the battery capacity, everything on the app. So I can always check that anytime I want to see, you know, where the battery levels are on this battery. Yeah, but after we mount the battery, we mount the controller, the original DS harness that I had for a regular DS. I actually lengthened it for an eight passenger golf cart. that We was going to build in this place here, but that cart just took up too much real estate. Anyways, I'm gonna have to shorten that cable. We're gonna have to put the M core in. There's a few other odds and ends we're gonna have to do, but we're gonna try to get all of that in today's video. That's enough talking. Let's start working. But 
All right, moment of truth. Here are some ignition switch here because my ignition switch has not came in yet. Um, battery is now fully in. Battery is hooked up here. This is my ground. This is my positive. Positives going to the solenoid. Solenoids go into the controller. Controller here into the power there. Got my three phase cables are hooked up. The ground here is that green one going over to the ground. I have my um, switch there. That's going to be for the tow run switch or the master on off switch. Okay. Three wires here is going to be for the FNR. Uh, yellow should be my, I mean, orange should be my main in, and then your blue and your brown should be for the reverse. The M core is in. Let me go over here and show you the M core. Got everything wired up on the bottom. Okay. I need to put a wire tie up on these wires here. I have this uh, going over uh, here as well. Went ahead and hooked up the brake cables with these little brackets from All Sports here. I need to go ahead and hook up the spring here. I need to get the spring for the throttle cable going to the front of the frame there. I need to put the C-clips into the brake uh, cables on the mounts on the frame and down by the wheels as well. But for the most part, that's, uh, I think that's the system. I've kind of just took my time hooking everything up. Only thing I got left to do now is basically to turn the battery on and make sure everything is operable. And I'm gonna do that for the first time on camera on, on here. So. this is done here then well we should be good to go uh, it's off we're going to turn the battery on battery's now on not sure if you can see that or not but it's got a green light over here on the battery we'll hook up the ignition wires the blue and the green Those are hooked up. So I've got one of these. Let's take the blue and the orange together. Let's see if we got anything here. I got three red blinking lights. I bet the charger interlock is on on the controller, but I got to access the phone to do that. So give me just a minute. It was not the charger interlock. I had to switch it from 48 to 72 volts. Um, not sure which one this is here, but all right, good deal. Let's reverse. Make sure my board's working. Good deal, good deal. All right, so the golf cart is now working like it should. And that means that the, um, yeah, it's working exactly like it should. Let me unhook the wires here, turn that off. Well guys, this pretty much wraps it up. We've made it to the end of the video. Uh, I told myself by the weekend, I was wanting to have this thing running under its own power. Well, we just turned the battery on. And even though we don't have a couple of switches in place, she moves on its own power. So I like the fact that this was a 1984 resistor cart due to the fact that it's got the aluminum walls uh, that acts as um, kind of like fender wells on the golf cart. I was able to mount the controller and the solenoid directly to those walls. So I'm keeping the floor space open. 
Um, I still want to mount a subwoofer on here, throw a couple of speakers in here. I want to put a uh, cooler possibly and maybe a 12 volt system. So we got a lot more stuff to do in some upcoming videos. Still need to put the interior on. We still need to mount the dash. I got a lot more stuff we're gonna to add to it within the next week or so, but uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do, and until next time, we'll see y'all later. Thanks for watching.